Good morning and welcome to worship this day. We hope and pray this worship is a, a meaningful part of your week. A reminder that we have worship on Facebook and Vimeo and YouTube. So if you are watching on one um, and it becomes glitchy or there is a problem of some sort, feel free to jump over to another. Um, one of them will be working for you this morning or later in the day if you are watching later. Um, if you, when you are watching with worship, we encourage you to send us a text at 419-595-4591. Let us know who's participating, and that's a great way to send in any prayer requests that day as well. A reminder that Vacation Bible School will be online um, and at home from June 22nd to the 26th. We are bringing back or have bags available with craft supplies and science supplies and some um, family activities as well as some kitchen um, snack ideas. So there will be activities to do, not just things to watch or participate online. Um, please register by June 8th in order to make sure we have the supplies and get those available to you. If you register after June 8th, you can still participate and we will still send you all the guides, but you may not be able to get the supplies from us at least. So please register online now and you can do that by going to Hope's website um, and scrolling down there is a place to register online there. Reminder, if you're in need of help with shopping or errands or yard work with appropriate physical distancing, you can call or text the church office. Um, and we have some volunteers who have decided to, or who have volunteered to help with that. We do have a workday scheduled for Hope for Salem um, on June 20th. There are two shifts from 9 to noon or 1 to 4. Um, there is a maximum number of volunteers per shift, and all safety um, and protective equipment will be supplied. Um, so you do need to register for that, and you register by calling the church office, um, and we can make sure that everything is available for you then. So this is a great chance um, to get out of the house and help with some work down at Salem. We also have an outdoor worship service scheduled for June 21st in Arrowhead Park across the street from the church on, off Indian Road. Um, this will be at 10 a.m., so our 9 a.m. service will still be broadcast um, at, like normal online, and then we will gather for worship at 10 a.m. There will be communion. Um, more information about safety and all the precautions we're taking um, will be available in the coming week, but you will need to bring your own chairs or blankets and then spread out in the park, and there will be communion available then. If you'd prefer to come and stay in your car, we will be reserving the first few spaces um, along Indian Road, along the park there, um, where you can come and stay in your car and listen there. We give thanks for everyone who has been able to um, continue supporting us financially, um, and our mission partners give thanks for that as well. We begin a new series this day, Hope in Challenging Times. With that, I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we hear our call to worship.
continue with our order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed by the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you can provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join in our hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And also also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, sometimes it is hard for us to look beyond today's circumstances, beyond even tomorrow's problems. Keep teaching us how to focus on your wonderful deeds and your plans for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to uh, God's word with uh, Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard me cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not run to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, beginning at the 25th verse. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food in the body, more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Well, brothers and sisters, today we begin our next sermon series, Hope in Challenging Times. 
And as I reflect on hope, I think that there are really three uh, responses I see to the challenges we have in life. Uh, there's pessimism, the belief that evidence shows that things will not get better. Optimism, the evidence shows that things will get better. Or hope, regardless of what the evidence shows, God is faithful. And brothers and sisters in Christ, we are people of hope, not just because that's the name under which we gather. We are people of hope. We are to find hope, we're to experience hope, and we're called to give hope to others. And the hope that we have is a hope that has its roots in God's relationship with humanity. We have hope because when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and ate the fruit, God made clothes even as they were ordered out of the garden. When Cain killed Abel, God provided a sign so that he would not be killed himself. And when the flood came, God didn't destroy all of humanity, but saved Noah and his family. And when they were called to go across the face of the earth to multiply and populate it, and they instead decided to build a tower to God, God didn't wipe them out, but God gave them grace and simply confused their language. We are a people of hope because throughout all of history, God has been rescuing us, saving and extending grace to humanity. Yet what exactly is hope? I mean, the first verse of today's psalm, uh, we read, um, I waited patiently for the Lord. He, he inclined to me and heard my cry. The contemporary English version uh, says, I put my, all my hope in the Lord. And the word there is in the Hebrew, uh, kwa, is, uh, can be translated as wait or hope or await. And this word is very common in Job, interestingly enough in the Psalms and Isaiah. To hope is to wait expectantly that the future will be better than the present, and to hope is to trust in God. Yet what is the basis of the hope that the psalmist had? And the psalmist clearly has tremendous hope in God. The psalmist has hope and waits patiently because the psalmist knows what God has already done. The ultimate event in the history of God's people in the Old Testament, where the people were saved by, uh, from a famine by the fact that brothers had sold Joseph into slavery and ended up in Egypt, uh, discerning dreams. But then we begin Exodus with the, the reminder that a pharaoh came up who forgot Joseph. And the Israelites now in Egypt find themselves a slave. And when the people begin to get so great, the pharaoh fears and orders that the male babies be killed. And Moses is saved, is raised in the house of the pharaoh. And eventually God raises him up gives him uh, Aaron as a spokesperson, and through the series of plagues, finally gets God's people freed from slavery, brought to a promised land, and placed there. We read in Exodus chapter 3, then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have seen how the Egyptians oppress them, so come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. I waited patiently for the Lord. Let's stop there for a second. Um, you know the story. The pivotal story of God's people in that Exodus is one of those uh, Sunday school canon stories. God 
leads them out, a pillar of cloud and fire, places them firmly in the promised land. And the history that follows always harkens back to the good news of what God has already done for God's people. To see how this shapes the hope that God's people have, I want to turn now with you to Psalm 40, because what happens in Psalm 40 is rather interesting. It starts with what I read. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord, my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, here I am, in the scroll of the book it is written, I delight to do your will, O my God, your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. The psalmist begins the chapter with ten verses recounting all that God has done and why God can be trusted. And then, after recounting all of that, the psalmist comes to the place of his plea, which is the remaining parts of the verses. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For evils have encompassed me without number. My iniquities have overtaken me until I cannot see they are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me, O Lord. Make haste to help me. Let all those be put to shame and confusion who seek to snatch away my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire my hurt. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha, aha, that may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes me, takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. We too, brothers and sisters, are people with a history of experiencing God's very goodness. No matter what it is that we may face, pain or loss, hunger, poverty, pandemic, these have, are things that God's people have faced from the very beginning. And God has seen us through them, and God will see us through in this time as well. Good, good news for us this day is that we are people of hope, and because of that, and trust in God for our future. We have hope because God is journeying with us now into the future. We put all of our hope in the Lord. So uh, on our Facebook page so that you can download these, we have images that you can use as a screensaver or perhaps a, a cover for your phone, uh, the different things. When, uh, when you, what's at the other end of your life rope in the psalm for today, I put all my hope in the Lord. And over the next three weeks, we'll continue to look at examples in Scripture where God's people felt like they were at the end of their rope, and God's response provided hope for the challenges that they faced. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks that we are a people of hope, that you've continued to reach out and to act with grace and love, and that you journey with us even in this time. We pray in Jesus' name.
together, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized into sharing your life-giving good news with all the world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, mammals, and call them good. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity. Instill wisdom in advocates who work towards justice in often ignored communities. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. God of care, you created us in your image. Help us see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially those in need of healing or comfort this day, Jim, Ralph, Christine, and those we name before you now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of companionship, you accompany this body of faith. As the rhythms of summer begin, protect those who travel and renew all who will enjoy a time of Sabbath. Shelter those who will not be protected from the summer's heat. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our office. broken when God 
God sang the song, and light pierced the darkness, and rhythm began, and with its first birth cries, creation was born, and preacherly voices sang praise to the morn. To you, God, the singer, our voices we raise. To you, song incarnate, we give all our praise. To you, Holy Spirit, our life and our breath, be glory forever through life and through death. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God is the creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the comforter, bless you, and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join in our closing hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.